Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now today we're gonna to be looking at Fluffy Audio's Aurora, a really cool contact library with a really cinematic sound. Not only that, but I have a very special offer for you guys on this at the moment where you can get 60% off of the normal price. More about that at the end of the video. But first of all, let's take a look at this awesome library. Okay, so here we are looking at the main interface of Aurora. Now, Aurora is a contact library and you will need the full version of contact to use it, so do keep that in mind. Now, I have a patch loaded up called Second Star to the right, and it's one of over 200 patches that you get with Aurora, and they have enormous variation in sound. I'm only going to be using a couple of the patches today to demonstrate the sort of features of Aurora and how you can go ahead and change the sounds and the patches themselves. Of course, you can make your own patches and you can make them up with over 200 different sounds in the library of Aurora to begin with. So there's a lot of different sounds in there. Now, let's have a listen to this patch first of all, and then I'll go through the controls that you can see on the right hand side. So as you can hear, just in that one patch, there's a lot going on. There's this kind of piano sound going on. There's an obvious drum percussion sound going on. And then this very atmospheric sort of top end sound. So let's have a look and see how those sounds are layered and sort of created and adapted. I'm gonna start off by soloing that piano and let's have a listen to it all by itself. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can change the sound of that piano. First of all, we've got these three controls here, amplitude, pitch, and pan. So amplitude just uh, changes the sort of overall volume of that piano or whatever instrument you've got loaded. And you can also use this slider just over to the left here to do the same thing. I find that a little bit more convenient when I'm blending the different layers together. Then you've got the pitch. As you can hear what that does there, fairly obvious, and then pan. Now what's really important here is to notice these little controls under each of the main controls. You can actually send each of these controls through some modulation. So for example, if we take the pan control here, I'm going to click on this symbol down here and I'm gonna add a step modulator. You can see that's come up here and it's set to one extreme in the first step, the other extreme in the second step, back to the first and then it stays to one extreme. So that will be from one channel to the other, left and right. I'll turn that up there so we're getting the full effect and I'll play it again and have a listen to see what that does. So you can make quite big changes using these different modulations on any of these main controls. The next thing we'll go over to is the filters over here. Um, we just basically have three filters, a low pass, a high pass, and a band pass filter. So I'll just switch it to high pass and we'll play that piano again. Take that step off of there first of all and have a listen to what this high pass filter does. So as you can tell, you only get the top end of the sound there. And obviously, if I bring it down, you'll get more of the sound. So again, I could apply one of these modulations down here. I'll use the step one again, the same one as we had before, and have a listen to what that does to this cutoff. Put it on full, have a listen. So 
So again, we can really have some very dynamic control over each of these controls here. We'll turn the filter off and we'll go to this section down here. Now, those of you familiar with synthesizers will know exactly what this is, ADSR. This stands for attack, decay, sustain and release. And it's a very common way to change the sounds of synthesized instruments. So for example, this piano at the moment actually has a very sort of slow attack to it. When you hit the key, it takes it's just a millisecond for the sound to come in. If we wanted to make it sound more like a real piano, then we would take this attack and make it very, very quick. So you get that real hammer sound of a piano. Have a listen now. And so on and so forth. You can go through attack, decay, sustain, release. I'm not going to explain all of them now. That's perhaps for another video, but you can make enormous changes to your sounds using ADSR. Now, on the bottom right here, we have sends. These are for the atmospherizer sends. I didn't know atmospherizer was actually a word, but apparently it is. Now, this basically works in a similar way to a console. So if you send, if you want a lots of delay, you will put this up full. Now, if I play it now, there is no difference. And that's because we have to go over to effects over here and go to the atmospherizer settings down here, go to delay and enable it. And now we should hear some delay. So those are sends that we have there and they are sends for each of the layers of the instrument. So they get all of these controls are individual to these layers. They're not to be confused with the overall effects. If we go back to the effects tag uh, tab again, you can see these effects at the top. So if I applied this EQ, for example, I'll enable it. I'll go back to my layers and I'll turn the solo off so that we're hearing all of the layers. Now this EQ will now affect all of the layers. So have a listen. I'll just take all the bottom end out there. You can hear for all the layers it's changed. So that's an important thing to note when you are using Aurora. So going back here, we have the three different layers here and I'm gonna now go to this tabla layer. And the reason why I'm going there is because that is the sort of percussive instrument. Have a listen to that. So there's a couple of things to note here. First of all, it's a single pitch instrument. Whatever key I hit, I get the same sound. And that's because it sits a single here in the pitch mode. If I change it to multi, then when I hit different keys, you will hear a different pitch. Okay, so that's not what we want for this instrument. So we'll go back to single and we'll set the note down fairly low again. We'll put it down here to Put it down here to this G. Okay, now the other thing that's happening is you can hear an actual rhythm being played. So if we look at the top here, it says rhythm pattern and it's set to pattern C. If we didn't want to have a rhythm at all, we'd just disable that and we'd get just a single uh, just a single beat. But we'll go to pattern C and if we go to the rhythm tab here and switch to C, we can see the actual pattern which it's using. Have a listen. So I'll start to change that uh, velocity now. So that is how we change the rhythm for any particular layer. So that's the first patch I wanted to show you. Now I'm gonna load up another really cool patch. It's called Scandinavia. So we'll just load that up now. And I've prepared just a little chord progression to show you how this particular patch sounds. So have a listen to that. Yeah, 
I love this one. It's a really, really nice one. It's made up of a soundscape of this Chopin-esque piano, which sounds like this. It's a lot of the sound you hear. And then just two different glockenspiel sounds layered there. Now, what if I want to actually add another layer here? So let me show you how you do that. I'd go to an empty layer down here. And we first of all start off by hitting this selection here and we choose between long and short sound. So I'm gonna go for a long sound. And then we have another selection box here. And here we can choose the different long, long sounds available to us in the Aurora Library. So I'm gonna go for a pad. And then I can see all of the pads here. And uh, you can see there's a few there and I'm gonna go for ocean. So that is now loaded up and we have now a fourth layer. Now I'm just gonna solo that and have a listen to it by itself. Okay, so I can hear right away, it's not a bad sound, but it's very, very loud compared to everything else. So I'll just push it all the way down here, turn solo off and have a listen. Okay, that's really nice. I might just change the panning a little bit. Just spread it out a little. And how about we add a whole bunch of reverb to it? We'll just chuck it up to full. Go to effects. Switch on reverb. Okay, that's nice. And of course you can change all of these controls here as we saw earlier. So that's the basic process of putting together your own patches for Aurora. A very, very versatile instrument. Now I really love this in terms of obviously atmospheric stuff. So if it was for sort of uh, movie sort of music or maybe games, but I've got to say I could use this quite happily in songs as well. I'd love to hear these sort of sounds with acoustic guitar and vocals on top. I think you could get some really cool results from that and that's what I'll actually be doing with it. Okay, so that is Aurora by Fluffy Audio. Now, as I say, we have this at a very special price at the moment. But before I get into that, if you did like this video, then please do hit the like button. And if you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice. If you like this kind of content, all about DAWs, home recording, plugins, gear reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to see my future videos. So at the moment, Aurora has 60% off if you follow the link down below in my description. That means where it normally costs around about 169 US dollars, you're gonna pick it up for around about 66 US dollars, which is a very affordable price indeed. So if you're interested in that, then follow the link in the description below and you can enjoy Fluffy Audio's Aurora today. Now, thank you for joining us and I will see you in the next video.